Hello, my name is Julie Antry. In today's session, I'll demonstrate how a user is empowered by Cognos Analytics to uncover new analytical insights and data they've never seen before. In today's extremely competitive global marketplace, the one thing that truly differentiates an organization is its analytics. And while many vendors have been focusing on visual data discovery, IBM has focused on building a complete analytics solution that provides end-to-end self-service capabilities on a trusted platform. A platform that provides organizations all the capabilities they need, along with ensuring that they have trust in the integrity of the data they're using to make business decisions. Today, we'll see dashboards with the high visual appeal users desire. But Cognos Analytics doesn't stop there. We'll also show how users can be completely self-sufficient for all their analytics needs how they can interact with their data for smart data discovery, and how they can use natural language assistance to uncover new insights into business performance, how they can leverage trusted corporate data sources and blend in additional data sources to extend out their analysis. And finally, we'll show how users can automate presentations to communicate their insights by narrating the data story to their business audience. It's always good to start with the end in mind, and since seeing is believing, let's take a quick peek at the art of the possible that Cognos Analytics has to offer for dashboarding. We'll start with a standard performance dashboard, easily assembled with a sleek, clean design and fully interactive. Each widget responds to every other widget to have a fully integrated experience for the user. But what if I wanted to personalize it a bit, add a logo, make it a bit easier to read with borders that match the corporate color scheme? I can certainly do so. I can even go further and add a color to the background to make the information really start to stand out. If it's not quite flashy enough, I can go in and add in the standard corporate web background to give the same look and feel of other corporate sites we're currently using. We can even go in and mute the colors to make it look more like a watermark, add some infographics to make it pop just a little bit more and also add in a data player for time lapse so that the users can see information updating on their screen as they go. All the capabilities we expect from a dashboarding tool, right? But let's take it even further. Let's add some artwork to jazz it up a bit, some more infographics to highlight our KPIs and have an even more polished presentation. We can also go in and have street level detail into our maps so that the users have a fully interactive and very engaging experience as they work with their data. Looks great on my browser, right? But what if I need to access remotely from a mobile device? Cognos Analytics design templates provide the device awareness so objects will auto resize to optimize to the mobile display. Good stuff, but let's keep on going. Cognos Analytics dashboards even allow you to embed video content, a great medium to engage the user even further into their analytics experience. In this one, a technical lead at Nike discusses why Nike selected Cognos Analytics for their analytics solution. The most important thing to Nike was to ensure that users got the right answers at the right time. Through Cognos Analytics, Nike empowered their business users to become more involved in the business intelligence arena by providing them with the self-service access to trusted, governed data. And Nike isn't alone. Many of the world's most recognizable companies are running on IBM Cognos Analytics. Companies such as Boeing and Verizon, who also showcase their successes at our recent worldwide conferences. And why did they choose IBM for their analytics strategy? These companies understand that their organizations have more than one need, so their analytics tool need to offer more than one capability. Granted, a pretty dashboard is easy to consume, but it's only one small component in order to empower your business users with analytics. It's important for users to be able to easily build a visually appealing dashboard to communicate findings but it's more important for users to be able to perform the analysis to uncover the insights they communicate via the dashboard. For them to be able to leverage all data sources and have the ability to do deep data exploration and have ad hoc analysis capabilities to uncover the meaningful insights hidden deep within their data, because that's where the real business value comes from. And that's where Cognos Analytics comes in. Only IBM can provide this breadth of analytics capabilities on a single platform through a single user interface. So let's take a look at how Cognos Analytics does it. Today, I'll be in the role of a new business analyst at the Great Outdoors company. Great Outdoors recently acquired another company to add to its portfolio. 
The new company has been struggling for a bit, and my first assignment is to analyze the product performance across the company's brands and identify risks. The company's systems are currently being integrated, but not yet available. However, I've received a file with their sales history data from IT. With Cognos Analytics, I can easily upload this file and immediately start analyzing insights with the data. All I need to do is point Cognos Analytics to upload the file, and I'm on my way. Cognos Analytics will ingest the data into a column or data store. This data will be available for future use and may be refreshed as needed, as well as shared with other users. As it loads, Cognos Analytics analyzes the files and data to determine what it contains insofar as measures, attributes, times, locations, and so on. Once complete, a preview of the file will render. From here, I can scroll through the data preview and can select the columns from the data source to load. I want to work with all the data provided, so I'll accept it as is. The data is now saved in my content and I can simply select it to begin working with it immediately. Cognos Analytics presents several options to get started. I can select a single or multi-page dashboard or an infographic style. For the layout, I can choose from Freeform, or I can select from a list of predefined template formats that optimize the layouts of the dashboard content. These templates are device aware, so they will auto size to the device being used. Once the template is selected, Cognos Analytics opens up all the capabilities needed to build a dashboard. The template is in the work area on the right, and the data source panel on the left shows the uploaded file and all the data available to me to use for my analysis. There is also a data tray at the bottom of the screen, which will allow me to view the actual data values. Since this data is new to me, it's helpful to have a preview available without having to go to a different application when I need it for reference. And with that, I'm ready to start analyzing my data. I'll start by dragging over measures from my data into the predefined template. Cognos Analytics recognizes the number as a measure and automatically sums it to a single number. Having both revenue and planned revenue are great metrics to monitor, but even better would be able to have an additional measure which shows how the revenue is tracking to plan. By selecting both revenue and pl planned revenue, I can create a calculation on revenue attainment. and set the calculation to perform as anticipated. A new measure has now been added to my data source, which I can bring into my dashboard. When using a dashboard to present KPIs, I want to change the precision of the data to make it easy to read at a glance. Cognos Analytics makes this easy by providing on-demand toolbars that allow me to format my information. I'll abbreviate the numbers for the KPIs to make them easier to read at a glance. And I'll change the precision of the percentage to add a decimal point. With just these items, I'm already gaining insight into how the new company is performing to the revenue target. Currently, it seems to be tracking around 5% below plan. I need to understand what is contributing to the revenue shortfall. I'm going to pin this insight so I can use it later in communicating my insights to management. To understand this performance, I'll start with looking at global revenues. Cognos Analytics' new partnership with Mapbox provides world-class mapping capabilities to all users. We can see in the data that both country and province or state have a geolocation icon next to them. Cognos Analytics recognized these fields as location fields when we uploaded the data. Now, we can simply drag them onto the dashboard along with one of our measures, and Mapbox will generate the map for us. I can immediately see that the highest revenue is in Western Europe, followed by North America. But since I'm a bit geographically challenged, Cognos Analytics will help me out by allowing me to have more information when hovering over my data. And Mapbox helps me out with the ability to zoom in to look at street level detail on the map. I can also add in another measure and Mapbox will refresh the global map for me.
And while I'm here, I'll reformat the axis labels once again to abbreviate them the same as I did the KPIs. Cognos Analytics provides me with an on-demand toolbar that allows me to do this where and when I need it. I can simply abbreviate the numbers and then resize the map to fit my screen. Since this data is new to me and I'm not familiar with it yet, I can use the Smart Search section in Cognos Analytics to get guidance for my analysis. When using Smart Search, I can type in search criteria in natural language. Cognos Analytics will analyze the available data resources and render a list that have matches to the search criteria. In looking at revenues by year, many options will appear, and I can select one to use it to add to the dashboard. Cognos Analytics has presented me with a visualization that shows how the revenues are trending over year. By adding in product line, I'll be able to see the breakdown in more detail. I can simply drag that from my data source onto the visualization. Cognos Analytics recognizes that these data elements represent a trend and updates the visualization to optimize the presentation. However, using the on-demand toolbar, I can open the visualization library and select another visualization of my choosing. This heat map provides quick insight into historical performance. First, we see that mountain equipment must be a newer product line as it looks to be introduced in 2011. Next, we can easily identify that outdoor protection is the smallest revenue generator of all of the product lines. Of the remaining three product lines, camping equipment appears to have the largest decline in 2013. Again, I'm going to pin this insight for future use. I need to go a little deeper and look at how the different product types are performing. I can select a visualization from the visualization library and Cognos Analytics provides the design setup to customize the visualization. I'll bring in some more detail to take a look at how product types are performing under each one of the product lines. And I'll do this with respect to revenue for my analysis. I'll return the visualization to my dashboard for the remaining space so that I can continue with my analysis. Using the on-demand toolbar for the axis, I'll be able to sort this in descending order in order to better ascertain what the rank is of each one of the product lines. Seeing the product types gives me a good idea of how they rank for revenue generation. However, for this analysis, I'm most interested in the poor performers contributing to the revenue shortfall. Cognos Analytics makes it easy to narrow down the list to the top and bottom performers. For my analysis, I'll look at the bottom five. The lowest performers all appear to be from the outdoor protection line. And this makes sense since that's the smallest product line overall. The next two also appear to be from the smaller product lines of golf and mountaineering equipment. So I'll narrow my focus by filtering on camping equipment. By selecting camping equipment from the heat map, the entire dashboard will dynamically update to respond to this filter. Now I can easily see the lowest performing product types under camping equipment, and of these, Lanterns is the bottom performer. I'll pin this insight, and I'll rename my dashboard to Sales Performance. I also notice that the revenue attainment for camping equipment drops to 7% below plan, lower than the company overall. I'd like to focus in on camping equipment to see if I can uncover some more insights into the revenue shortfall on lanterns in particular. So I'll add another tab to continue my analysis, this time focusing on camping equipment. And I'll rename it to camping equipment. There are several ways I'd like to slice and dice my data for analysis, so I'll add each one of these into the dashboard. I'll start with year. Product line. Product type.
and brand. Cognos Analytics identifies these as attributes and automatically sets them up as pick lists for filters on the dashboard. These filters are inherently smart. As I select an item from one filter, the others dynamically update to respect the filter chosen and now render only the values applicable for the applied filter. For instance, in the camping equipment product line, once selected, notice that the product types listed now narrow down to only those associated with that product line. Likewise, when I choose the product line lanterns, the brands listed are only for lanterns. I'll also select 2013 since I'm interested in the current year. I need to get more detail to understand how the revenues for individual products are performing. I'll select these data items together and move them to the dashboard. Cognos Analytics recognizes the data items and time as a trend and presents me with a visualization optimized to show trending. And this is perfect. Immediately I see that one product appears to be extremely volatile. The Flickr Lantern. Exactly the insight I needed. This is a product that I need to investigate further. And I've just received an email letting me know that the new company's ERP data is available on our Great Outdoors system. I also received some social media data and some CRM data that the marketing department is very interested in having analyzed. So I'll create a data module which will allow me to blend these disparate data sources. Cognos Analytics data modules make data blending easy and intuitive across all data sources. Moreover, data modules are not static like data extracts. Once a data module is built, it's available to the user for all future analysis and always provides the most recent data in the underlying tables. To get started, I simply select the data source I want to use. This can be from my corporate data systems or uploaded data files. But since the new company's data is now in our system, I want to build my data module around the trusted corporate data. Cognos Analytics will read in the data source and present all the data I have permissions to view. I see that I have access to an extensive amount of corporate data that I can use for analysis. But fortunately, with Cognos Analytics intent-driven modeling, I can use the intelligence in Cognos Analytics to assist me in identifying where the data I need may be found by entering data items I need to work with. Continuing my analysis from earlier, I want to investigate more on the product types and their target sales data. Because Cognos Analytics is designed to anticipate my intent, it analyzes the data source I've selected and suggests a proposed list of data tables containing the type of information that may suit my analysis. I can accept this proposal and begin working to customize the data set for my analysis. A visual representation of the data appears in the diagram. As a user, I can enhance or augment the data module myself. If there's data I do not need for my analysis, I can easily remove the table to refine the data used. I can also extend out the data module by adding more data. For instance, I can bring in the product master table to get more information on the individual product attributes. And eventually, I may want to analyze down to the order level detail. Cognos Analytics makes it easy for me to search for these types of tables using Find, and I can add them to my data module. Notice all the lines between the tables in the diagram? Cognos Analytics recognizes the join relationships between the data sources, allowing me to see what relationships I may want to leverage. I can review the join and edit in order to add an additional join criteria if necessary. If a relationship is not recognized, I can manually define how to join the tables. And I can work directly with my diagram so that I can better understand the relationships between the tables and see them in a visual fashion.
Now recall, I just received a social media data file from marketing. With the single UI in Cognizant Analytics and the self-service capabilities, I can upload the additional social data I just received and add it to my data module, and I won't have to leave the interface to do it. Once it's uploaded, I can add the file into my data module by searching in my Uploaded Files. Now, with my external data file of social media, I can join the social media file into my data module by identifying the common relationship between the two files. In this case, the common relationship is on product number. I can continue adding in data sources to extend out my data module with all the data sources I need, including the CRM data or any new data sources that are made available to me in the future. But for now, I'm going to further customize my data module by using the robust data preparation capabilities provided by Cognos Analytics. For each data measure, Cognos Analytics allows me to set the properties of how I want to use the data and have it treated within my analysis. In my social media data, I see I have age as a measure. And even though age is a number, which are typically summed, I want age to be treated as an attribute that averages, since the summing of ages would have no analytical value. I can go into the properties of the age, and I can change it to the attribute and show that it does average. Cognos Analytics also allows me to set up custom groups in my data module. So in looking at the age in the social media data, I believe it would be beneficial to add in an age group. There may not be much of a difference in looking at behaviors of individual ages, such as that between the behavior of a 22-year-old and a 23-year-old. Much more insightful would be to show the differences between millennials and baby boomers. Easily, I can add in a custom group for age. I can set the number of groups, and I can set the parameters for each. I'll set up a group for minors. I'll set up a group for millennials, a group for Gen Xers, a group for baby boomers, and the remaining group will be for seniors. I see now that I have age group added into my data module, and I can now use this for future analysis. Many more data preparation capabilities exist in Cognos Analytics. Capabilities such as validations, adding navigation groups, cleansing data, setting up geospatial location attributes for mapping, and many more. But in the essence of time, let's move on to work with a customized data module like the one we've just created. Going back to the analysis I've already started, I can add in a new tab for my customer sentiment analysis. I'll add in the custom data module to my data sources to begin augmenting my analysis with the new information. I can now see from the data module the social media data that we had added in. The first thing that I'm interested in is what the social media sentiment is from the information provided. It appears that overall the social sentiment trending a bit more positive, which is good. I can go in and I can change the visualization to one that I prefer, which will allow me to preserve a little real estate on my dashboard. I can also go in and change the access values to make them a bit easier to read. We'll abbreviate them like we did with the KPIs earlier. Next. I'm wondering how the customer satisfaction ratings are trending. I'll bring in a visualization for the customer satisfaction ratings. 
But rather than searching through all of my data to find the information that I'm looking for, I'll use Cognizant Analytics find function to be able to quickly identify in the entire data list where my data is. I'll use customer satisfaction as the value I want to measure. And I'll do this looking at my product line. With satisfaction and categories of product line, I'm able to easily identify where the product satisfaction scores are for my data. In looking at the customer satisfaction ratings across product lines, it appears that camping equipment is right in the mid-range on satisfaction, so that's good. Next, I'd like to see if I can get some insight on individual products. So I'll bring in a word cloud where I can quickly identify individual product mentions on social media. From my social media data, I'll pull in the social media accounts and the individual products to create my word cloud. The word cloud gives me an easy way to identify the products with the most mentions as the size of the product name indicates the higher mention counts on social media. I can use the radial buttons to select each product line and easily identify the most popular products for each line on social media as the word cloud will update as each is selected. Likewise, I can also filter on my positive and negative social media sentiment. In clicking on positive, I can see which products on social media are receiving the most positive mentions and comments. I can then click on the negative sentiment to determine which ones are receiving the most negative comments and chatter in social media. And here we have it. Flickr Lantern has the highest number of mentions with negative sentiment. There's clearly something going on, and I'll bet the social media comments will shed some light on the negative sentiment. I can bring the comments in as they were included in the social media data file. And from reading the comments, I see that there was an incident involving a Flickr Lantern in Europe. There's been a lot of negative chatter around this product. This is definitely an insight I want to share with marketing and our public relations team. So I'll pin it to place it in my analysis for management. The analysis of the new company's data has been very insightful, and I think I'm ready to prepare the summary of the findings for the management meeting. In less than half an hour, I was able to take an unfamiliar data set and uncover more than a half dozen insights into the performance of the new company. With the upcoming meeting with management, I'm sure they'd love to get an advanced preview. I'll automate the presentation to tell the data story so that they can easily walk through the analysis on their own. All of the insights I've pinned along the way are available in my pin library. I'll start with adding a quick intro I created for my presentations. Then I'll bring in the insights in the same order I found them to illustrate the thought flow process that I went through. First, I'll bring in the revenue attainment KPI, where we found a 5% shortfall in revenues. Next, I'll bring in the revenue heat map, which showed that the camping equipment product line had the largest revenue decline for the current year. And, as we looked further into camping equipment, we found that lanterns had the lowest revenue contribution of all of the product types. Then, in looking at the individual products and lanterns, we found that the Firefly Flicker Lantern had been extremely volatile in revenue performance this year. And finally, in looking at the social media data, we found a lot of negative chatter surrounding the Firefly Lantern. 
Now that all of my insights have been added, I can automate the presentation. For each of the widgets, I can set the timing for when each one of the widgets will display in my presentation. Once done, I can play the story so that the insights are revealed in sequence. This is a great way to communicate findings, and even more powerful once we add a narration to explain the insights even further. Let's take a look at what a completed narrated story would look like. In the narrated story, I've added commentary in order for the user to be able to follow my thought process. As I progress through the presentation, the user has full interactive capabilities just as I did during my analysis. As they continue to progress along the story, they're progressing with the same thought process we did in our analysis. And again, with the interactivity that they need when they have additional questions. And there you have it. In less than 30 minutes, we've turned data into insights.